If you're tired of having non-stick pans with seemingly adhesive surfaces or warped stainless steel skillets that turn making dinner into a dangerous hot oil juggling act, these are the tips you need to make sure your frying pans stay as nice as they were the day you got them. There's something strangely satisfying about the way a hot pan will sizzle when you put it in the sink after cooking, but it turns out that that very sound could be indicating something bad is happening to your pan. When you heat a pan slowly on a stovetop burner, the layers of metal making up the pan gradually expand together. When you cool it down slowly, those layers contract gradually too. The problem comes when you introduce a screaming hot pan to cool water. The water can cause the outer layers of metal to cool down and shrink rapidly, while the interior layers stay hot and expanded, a phenomenon known as thermal shock. When one part of your pan cools down faster than the rest, it can cause the pan to warp, chip, crack or even shatter. Something you need to be careful of if you're using a glass, ceramic or a thin non-stick pan. Instead of filling your pans with water to soak or placing them in a wet sink right after cooking, let them cool for a little bit on another burner or on a trivet. Once they've cooled down, you can use warm water to soak your pans, as long as they're not cast iron. If you're cooking meat or veggies for your meal and want to get a good sear on them to help develop more flavour, it makes sense that you'd want to crank up the heat until your pan is screaming hot before you add your food. Knowing how foods can stick when you're trying to sear them, you might also decide to use a non-stick pan for this type of culinary endeavour. But using high heat with non-stick frying pans is actually one of the quickest ways to destroy them. Non-stick pans are usually made up of layered metals that are then covered in a non-stick coating. When you use high heat, when the pan gets above 500 degrees, the chemical PTFE or Teflon in the non-stick coating becomes unstable and the surface of your pan starts to deteriorate. At such high temperatures, your non-stick cookware can even release toxic fumes into the air in some cases. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. That means that searing steaks and veggies can take a big toll on your favourite frying pan. Once the coating starts to deteriorate, the pan loses its non-stick magic. Instead of using your non-stick pan for every cooking venture, consider saving it for things like pancakes, eggs and other foods that you cook gently over low or medium heat. This will help maintain the integrity of the non-stick surface so your pan lasts longer. There are a lot of myths and untruths about caring for cast iron skillets. Some people say you can't clean them with soap, but you can. Or that you shouldn't scrub them clean in case it chips the seasoning. It won't. It makes sense, though, that terrified of the alternatives, the next best thing would seem to be soaking cast iron. But it turns out soaking is one of the things you really can't do to your cast iron at all. Soaking your cast iron pan can cause it to rust. Once your pan rusts, it's not ruined, but you do need to sand off the rust with steel wool and re-season the pan entirely, which is more work than most of us want to deal with after cooking. Instead of soaking your cast iron pan, fill it with hot water when you're done cooking and use a scrub brush or rough side of a sponge to remove any stuck-on debris. If there are stubborn bits remaining, you use coarse salt as an abrasive to scrub the pan, or try simmering water in the cast iron pan until the stuck-on bits soften and can be scraped out. Non-stick frying pans are fragile. While they do cook things like crepes, eggs and fish flawlessly without sticking, keeping that non-stick surface intact is harder than you might think. One false move and the next thing you know, your favourite non-stick frying pan is covered in scratches and no longer lets eggs or pancakes effortlessly slide off its surface. So how can you make non-stick cookware last longer? One of the things you can do to ensure the surface of your non-stick pan stays smooth is to use Use wooden, plastic, bamboo or silicone utensils when you cook. Metal utensils can scratch and scrape the surface of your non-stick pan, eroding the coating. Likewise, you shouldn't use steel, wool or other metal scrubbers when you're washing your non-stick pans either. Instead, opt for a soft sponge or a scrubber that states that it's non-stick safe on the packaging. You should also keep in mind that unlike heirloom cast iron pieces, non-stick pans only last for about five years. If you've been avoiding metal utensils and scrubbers and still notice scratches starting to appear, it might be time for you to replace your non-stick pan. 
At the end of a long night when you've made a dinner that somehow used almost every dish you own, it's tempting to put your pans right into the dishwasher instead of getting up to your elbows in grease and soap bubbles. But if you succumb to the temptation of doing things the easy way, you could wind up ruining your pans altogether. Stainless steel pans might be okay in the dishwasher, but copper pans can change color. Non-stick frying pans can lose their non-stick abilities. Cast iron can get damaged. And carbon steel, enameled cast iron, and aluminum frying pans can also all be damaged in the dishwasher. There are a few reasons for this. The high heat of the wash water and steaming hot air dry can damage pans. The humid, damp environment can make your pans rust. And when the washer jostles everything around, it can cause stuff to scrape against or slam into your pans, denting or scratching them. For best results, stick to washing your frying pans by hand and drying them thoroughly when done. At least now you have an excuse to buy a fancy new set of dishwashing gloves. A quick spurt of Pam or another cooking spray is the first thing a lot of us put in our frying pans before we start on our recipe du jour. But using cooking sprays can make your non-stick pans stickier. What gives? It's not the oil itself that's the problem. Cooking sprays are usually made with oil, but it's the other ingredients like lecithin, which is an emulsifier, dimethyl silicone, an anti-foaming agent, and propane or butane, which are propellants that are what make the oil spray from the can that can start to ruin your non-stick frying pans. These ingredients build up over time, and when the lesser thin is heated, it can actually end up getting cooked into your pan, leaving a sticky residue that can make the surface of your pan tacky and, well, not non-stick. Is it cool maybe I just spray a little Pam down in that area right before the baby comes out? You have to admit it's a valid suggestion. Instead of using an aerosol cooking spray, try looking for a manual squirt bottle instead. That way, you can use a thin layer of oil on your non-stick pans without having to worry about those sticky byproducts building up. Most cast iron pans you buy these days are pre-seasoned and ready to cook with, and non-stick frying pans can be used without any special treatment. But with both cast iron and non-stick frying pans, it's important to re-season the cooking surface to keep it just like it was when you bought it. On cast iron, the seasoning is really a layer of fat that has polymerized or fused with the surface of the pan to create a plastic-like surface that's non-stick. When the surface begins to erode, it can be harder and harder to get things off your pan. To re-season cast iron, scrub it with a mild soap solution to remove food particles and residue, and use steel wool to remove any rust spots. Dry the pan thoroughly, then coat it with a thin layer of oil, both inside and out. Bake in a 450 degree oven for about an hour, then let it cool in the oven, or repeat a few times to build up the polymerized coating. You need to season your non-stick pans too, and luckily, it's easy. Coat the inside of your non-stick frying pan with a thin layer of oil, then bake at 300 degrees for an hour. Wipe off the excess oil once your pan is cool, and repeat the process once every six months or so, or when you notice your pan is starting to stick. If you have limited space in your home or have an apartment where you're not allowed to install pot and pan racks, chances are you usually stack your frying pans when they're being stored. It makes sense from a space saver perspective, but doing so can decrease the life of your cookware. This is especially true with cast iron and non-stick frying pans. Stacking cast iron can scrape or chip the surface of your pans, especially because the material is so heavy. Non-stick pans can get scratched up when they're stacked too, which can start to deteriorate the non-stick coating on the surface of the pan, leaving you with a skillet that your scrambled eggs stick to like glue, something no one wants. Ideally, you'd hang your frying pans to store them or set them in a cupboard in a single layer. But if you don't have the space, there's a way to make stacking your pans a little safer. Before you stack a pan inside another, put a double layer of paper towels, a piece of cardboard, pot holder, or even crocheted protectors in the base pan. The second pan will nestle on top of the protector and the protective layer will keep the surface from getting scratched. It will also help absorb any lingering moisture or oils that could degrade your pans or cause them to rust over time. 
Pan roasting your food, which means searing it on the stovetop and then moving your frying pan to the oven to finish cooking, adds flavour to your dish and helps ensure that cuts of meat are cooked to the proper internal temperature while still getting caramelised on the outside. But you need to make sure it's safe to put your frying pan in the oven. If you're using cast iron, enamelled cast iron, stainless steel or carbon steel with handles made of the same material as the pan itself, you should be able to use those in the oven. But if you're using non-stick pans or if your pans have plastic handles, there are a few things you need to know. For pans with plastic handles, the best way to preserve them in the oven is to wrap any plastic parts in a double layer of wet paper towels, which should then be wrapped in aluminum foil. The water prevents the plastic from getting above the boiling point of water at 212 degrees, so a handle can be oven safe at a 425 degree oven for about an hour and at a 450 degree oven for about half an hour. For non-stick pans, you also need to make sure that they don't get above 500 to 600 degrees in the oven. At 500 degrees, the chemical PTFE, as we mentioned earlier, in the non-stick coating becomes unstable, degrading the non-stick surface. For best results, check to see if your frying pans are oven safe when you buy them, before attempting to put them in the oven. The seasoning on a cast iron pan is a layer of polymerized oil, which helps keep your food from sticking to the pan when you're cooking. It also helps protect the metal that the pan is made of. So when this layer of seasoning begins to deteriorate, the food that you're cooking can come into contact with the pan's interior metal, discoloring your pan and making your food taste weird and metallic. That's why, although you can cook acidic foods like tomato sauce or lemon chicken in your cast iron pan, you need to be strategic. Making these high acid foods in a brand new cast iron pan that doesn't have a heavy layer of seasoning built up can leave you with a skillet that everything sticks to and a dinner that tastes like spare change. Even if you buy a brand new pan that claims to be pre-seasoned, it's a good idea to wait until you've additionally seasoned your cast iron a few times and cooked up a few batches of bacon in it to build up that polymerized layer before you move on to more acidic dishes like meatballs in marinara. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about kitchenware are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.